In this video here, I'm going to show you how to create a eyeball shader, which contains the, the pupil, the iris, the cornea, and the sclera all put together. And I want to just kind of compare it to this is sort of the eyeball that comes on, this is the, the Kyle, Kyla rig and you can see that they have like a geometry here for this disc shape and we don't want that we want to be a, uh, a specular highlight and they have then this cornea shape which is intersecting with this other shape this is kind of indenting in on the iris part of it and this is just gonna is this is not ideal for uh, doing shading. We want to do all of the stuff that they're trying to do here. We want to just do it in the shader. So what I've done here, and this would be kind of the first step, is you need to replace the, um, the, the model that they have of the eyeball with just a perfect sphere. And um, you know, you could take the sphere, um, take a sphere and incorporate it into the rig and sort of snap it to the pivot point and like integrate it into the, the rigging with like a parent constraint or maybe like a wrap deformer or something. Another thing you can do, um, which is pretty easy to do, is you can just rotate this around to the back side of it and then hopefully the other side has something that's usable. But um, you just replace this with a sphere and then you get this. So this is what we're going to be making is uh, this look. And this look is, um, you know, it's interactive, right? So you see that the, the highlight here is sort of uh, across from the highlight on the eye. And it's all kind of like working correctly with the lights and has like subsurface scattering on the sclera and everything. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get to making this. All right, let me start with uh, showing you how I made just the, the blue iris here. So let me make a new shader and assign it. And we will make a ramp. And I'm just going to drag that into the color. And I'm going to come in here and I'll make this blue. And did I assign this correctly? Let's see. Oh, I bet it's because we're just seeing all white. Nope, it's because I assigned it to the wrong thing. I assigned it to the specular derp. All right, let me drag that into the color. Cool. All right. And I, I do eventually want to have it in the specular, but to start off with, just to make it simple, we'll look in the color because it's then easy to see. All right, I want to make this a circular ramp and I'm going to put this onto none so I can see what I'm doing better. And I'll make another one here and make that black. There is my pupil that is obviously way too big. So maybe like that. I'm going to come over to here and make this black so I get kind of the outline of the size of the iris that I want. And I'll just say there, happy with that. And then I can start to, you know, make this look a little prettier. But what you can also do is you can actually take a texture map. And so I believe I have somewhere in here a texture map. Here we go. And I can come into here and drag that into there. And it just inserts my texture map into here. And then I can kind of continue to play around with this and tweak things. One thing I want to do is I'm just going to put this onto uh, linear or smooth. And then I need to take this and slide this over 
So I get the pupil shape kind of butted right up against this. I could keep it like that. I could decide that I want to add another one in here and um, just put a color into it like that and make it kind of dark and sort of kind of fades into the other part. Or if I want, I could also take this um, here and drag it into here as well like that. And then maybe I make this map, I do bring in two maps, make it a little bit darker. I do want to get kind of the darkening around the edges. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to remove the texture map altogether. Something like that. Okay, cool. And now we're ready to take that as our starting point and uh, continue to work on the, the iris. In particular, we want to get the concavity going on this with a bump map. All right, what I want to do next is create kind of a dent where the iris is going to go using a bump map. So I'm going to create a ramp. stick that into the bump. So I'll drag this into the bump map here. And then I'm going to set this to circular. And we see we got it in here. It is because it is set to linear. It's making a little point here. So let's set this to smooth instead. And that looks pretty OK. I think that this dot we're seeing here is a specular. So let's just, for now, let's turn the specular off. Yeah, now we can see we have this indentation here. And we can kind of you know uh, adjust this a little bit later. Um, one thing I might want to do is take this and make this uh, 0.5 because right now it's kind of coming out and I'm not sure we want to do that. Now it's just uh, neutral here on the edges and then going in here and I can also see if maybe I want to dip it in deeper like that. But really what I want to do is to see if it's working for me. I, I, it's basically there. I want to switch this over to uh, doing this stuff on the specular. So I'm just going to put a color into the specular temporarily and crank it all the way up and make it rough and turn off my diffuse so I only see the specular. And right now I'm getting dielectric specular. I want to get more of a metallic specular. So I'm going to come to the IOR and I could put in metalness, but instead I'm just going to kind of override it here by putting in some crazy, implausible, physically incorrect number like this. And then I will increase this here and I can play around with uh, getting this value to look right in here. So let's see here. The real challenge here is to just be able to see what you're doing. I'm going to come into the bump and let's make it less. Okay, I think that looks better. And let's make it even less. That's maybe too much. I'm just going to kind of dial it in like that. And let's pull this back there. So I get it kind of outside this rim here. I don't really want the rim to be inside of where I'm working. Okay, what I'm going to do, so anyway, 
that's a little challenging to, to get to work, but you're basically trying to get sort of an indentation here. And let me take my ramp that I have from earlier, and I'm going to replace this in the specular color. So instead of having blue, I'll have my ramp. There, I think that helps a lot to just, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting where it is in the proximity to the light. So what I want to get is what I have here on the left and over here. Let's compare actually what I have. So I have this ramp here that I just made and this ramp over here. Um, this is set to smooth, this is set to white, so uh, let's compare it. It's set to smooth too. Let's set this to white and let's scooch it over. Let's also look at the bump. The bump is at 0.2 on this one and it's at 1 on this one, so 0.2. And that is looking nicer. Um, This is set to 0.5 and 100. That's pretty much the same. I think it might have to do with where the, the bump is on this. And maybe what I want to do is get it to be more in. Okay, so I need to first of all go back to this and set this to 0.5 so I get like a really soft specular reflection. Then I'm getting this. Now this is kind of what I want. I'm getting kind of a soft here and then darker over here. So that takes some tweaking to get this to work as desired, but that's the thing that you're aiming for, is getting to be lit up on this side, kind of opposite the light direction. And what that's doing is, that's not really what physically happens on the eye. The reason that you get sort of this lightened up part on the iris on a human eye is because the brow here is casting a shadow down onto this and the top part from the brow gets the shadow and the bottom part does not. However, with cartoon characters, usually they don't have uh, the same pronounced brow that a human does. And they also have these ginormous giant eyes because they're a cartoon. And so we have to sort of do this trick with the light here. So that's the, that's the goal of this. And we got that going pretty well. Um, Let's, just so you can kind of see and appreciate how this is working kind of under the hood, I'm going to break off the color and put in just a flat color. And you can see here, so we've got this, it's kind of like right on the edge, but we're seeing inside, inside of the rim, so to speak, you're seeing it brightening up here and then darkening over here. And if I Let's see, let's put the ramp back into it. And then I can actually go to the ramp and pull this back and you can see more what's happening. So the ramp is just kind of cutting out that outward rim. And maybe even what you might want to do is darken this even more to get that kind of classic darkening on the edges of the iris. Yeah, that looks nice. So I'm still getting the highlight in here when I'm getting the darken around the edges. All right, so we've got the pupil and the iris. And next up, we're going to move over to doing the cornea. So let's, to illustrate this, um, I'm just going to make a new material and apply it. And we're going to make a bump 
for it. Same as before with the ramp. And I will connect the ramp to the bump map. here, set this to circular ramp, set this to smooth, we want it to go, this is now going in like before, we want to do the opposite, so this is coming out and that's going in, and now we have kind of a little point here, which is not what we want, so let's try exponential down, and that's wrong, and exponential up. And now we're getting kind of a soft, softer kind of uh, transition here that could work. So, um, and what you can see here is the highlight. Let me, just to make that more obvious, let me uh, turn off this. We're seeing the highlight by itself. And you can see that it is coming right into the center of the eye. Now, notice my ramp is going all the way from one end to the other end. Um, you don't want to do something like this because you're going to get like this line on the eye. So you do want to go all the way across the eye like this. This is possibly a little bit too high, but you can see the effect that we have with the bump. If I set the bump to zero, so there is no bump, the highlight is up here and we want to move it down here and we're doing that by changing the geometry through the bump map or at least the way that the geometry is responding to the light and so if I just dial this in you see that it's moving towards the center where we want it so cool that's all there really is to that and then of course we would need to make this have a transmission, so it's transparent. The problem with this is that the next step you would think would be to make a layered shader and put this on top of the, uh, the shader for the iris and pupil. However, at least with a Arnold layered material, that doesn't work. So we're gonna have to use sort of a trick and put this onto the secondary specular lobe in an Arnold standard surface shader. So I'm going to come back into here, assign again my iris shader to this, and let's name this iris pupil. And since I'm going to add a cornea to it, I'll just go ahead right now and name it Iris Pupil Cornea. And I want to come over to the coat, turn the coat on, and I'm already instantly getting that highlight, but it's not where I want it to be. And that's because I need to put the bump map into it. Now I already have the bump map in a different place. I have the bump map here for the iris going in. It's not affecting the coat. To get a bump map to affect the coat, you've got to take the bump 2D node and drag it over into the normal. And then you can see it does affect it. And now I can actually uh, maybe take that down a little bit. There, like so. And so now I've got those three things going, the iris, the pupil, and the cornea. And I can play around also with, on the shader here, I can play around with the roughness that I want, and maybe make it a little bit bigger to get kind of more of a cartoony big highlight kind of thing going there. Of course, this also could be dependent on the light source. So you can have a, if you really want to get a disc in there, then make a disc shaped area light and have that reflecting in the eyes. All right, next up we need to do the sclera, the white part of the eye. And so I'm just gonna start with a new shader here and come into here and assign this. 
we want the sclera to be the sclera and teeth also have a ton of subsurface scattering on them way more than skin does actually so we're gonna do that down here in the subsurface so I'm gonna turn this on first of all and I'll come into here and I want to pick a color that is not pure white but just like kind of an eggshell white and uh, that that's going to be important later so that we uh, when, when you darken, you want to darken down because you want to be able to see the highlights, but you don't want to have it darken into gray because that's going to make it look like they're dead. So, so this is actually looking pretty nice, actually, like that. So I'll just call that good enough. And then we want to uh, combine these together. So. I'm going to make a layered shader. And we're going to put the, well, first of all, let me assign it here. And then I need to take the layered shader and I'm going to drag my iris pupil, etc., shader into here. the hold up a sec I think I need to reattach the there we go okay and then on my layered shader enable the top layer so two is above one on the layers so I'm going to drag the sclera shader and it just goes straight on top of it and what I need to do is use the mix to define where it is and where it isn't. So once again, I make a ramp and I set it to circular and I set my values to none. And then I'm going to come into here and drag this ramp into the mix. And now I can see a, it's like cutting a hole in it. And so I can sort of dial that to where I want to get it. Like maybe, maybe I want it to be there. And then I'll switch this over to linear and then I'll drag this over here really close like that. And now I'm getting the sclera on top of the other shader, the iris pupil cornea shader and I'm cutting a kind of portal hole to see through. So yeah, there you go. That's how you make an eye shader.